Yes, I'm innocent. Yes, I'm innocent. Hey, everybody, how's it going? This is Our House 21. This is something that's a little bit different. So, I have a good friend who has a laptop that the screen got broken. So, they asked me if I could find and uh, find a replacement and replace the screen for them. So, this right here is an HP. Well, let's just read the model number. This is an HP 15. So let's see if you can see it here. This is an HP 15Z AW000 Pavilion laptop or Pavilion notebook, more precisely. All right, so the thing about these things is that you have to be careful because there's a few versions of these things. Um, so there's some that come with a touchscreen and without a touchscreen. This is not the touchscreen version. We inadvertently ordered the touchscreen version and got a nasty surprise when we tried to replace it before. So the reason I'm filming this is the company where I got this from has a promotion where if you uh, film and install video, then they'll give you a credit. So I film videos, so I want to get the credit. All right. So things to keep in mind when you start to get into a, a, like a job like this, try to have your tools you're going to need ahead of time. I have this handy dandy little, uh, I have this handy dandy little cell phone repair kit that I picked up online for like a couple bucks. But this nicely has these plastic pry tools in it. But it also has these little, um, it has a couple different types of plastic pry tools and uh, this right here, but you can also use a guitar pick. Okay guys, so through the magic of editing, I reset time a little bit. So I had a, a very unwelcome surprise when I was in the middle of the install video there, because I realized that there are actually two different types of screens available for this laptop, and they have different style pin connectors. And on the description of the product, it very clearly says 30 pin versus 40 pin. In my extreme wisdom, I inadvertently ordered the 40 pin connector, which is right here. So here I can show you the two side by side. So you can see one of these things is not like the other. This laptop needs the smaller 30 pin connector, which is on the bottom, as opposed to the larger 40 pin connector, which is the touch enable screen here. So I, I thought I ordered the right one. I did not. So it's just a cautionary tale. When you're ordering your parts, make sure, extra double sure, that you're getting the correct one or correct variant for your model. Because oftentimes you end up, they end up having more than one version available. All right, so with that all uh, underway, let's go ahead and get this back apart so we can swap off the screen. So again, retracing the stuff today before. Well, first off, let's turn this bad boy off. Unplug the power. And you should also be prudent and remove the battery if your laptop has a removable battery. As you see, this one right here does not. So, which is odd now that I think about it. Okay, so again, with this particular model, I use my little pry tool. I use my little pry tool here and get underneath this little edge. So right under here and just pry this off. And like I said, this has been apart before. So for me, it's gonna come apart a lot easier. For a brand new laptop that's never been opened, you just need to be very careful with this. Pry it up slowly. Get it come, just don't force it. Slow and gentle and it'll come through and secured by a combination of double-sided tape and the little clips. So you can hear it coming up here. So down towards the bottom. Okay, so there we go, we're all set. All right, so down here at the bottom now, you've got four screws. One, two, three, four, holding this guy in place. Grab my precision screwdriver set.
and to my surprise I discovered that these are just standard Phillips screws so nothing special here I was all ready to break out special torque screws or you know something a little bit more funky but no just regular old Phillips so sometimes they actually make your life easy go figure all right so like I said four screws One, two, and make sure you're removing the correct screws because there's a lot of random screws under here. But there are these four little silver tabs, and I'll show you after I get the screen off that these connect to. Well, there's, like I said, one, two, three, four. So now. This comes forward, like this, and there's a little retainer right here that's holding it on. So this guy is tape. So you gotta get underneath, be careful, carefully pry it up, and pull it back, because it's actually holding the connector in the socket. So that's kind of the safeguard there. So once you peel this back, you can gently work the connector out of the socket, just like that. All right, so now I can take this old screen out of the way and let's grab the new one. So now we can just double check to make sure that this is the appropriate correct connector this time. And it should just go right in. nice gentle connection so now I can lay this down flat again so it does its job it holds it in place just like that all right so now I can lean this back up and just set it right down into its home and you'll see there are these four little plastic crosshairs that hold it in place one two three four all right so now at this point of the game I'm probably going to violate some you know standard practices but I'm going to go ahead and power this guy back up and just make sure that it's functioning before I go ahead and uh, finally screw everything in so I'm going to plug the power back in here and just hit this power button and see what happens And it works. All right, so that's perfect. Okay, so while this is doing its thing, I'm gonna go ahead and put in the last four screws or the only four screws to hold this thing in place. So. And I'm kind of funny. I like to go cross hatch pattern. So I want to go one. All right, so I just went cross hatch pattern one, two, three, four. Tiny these guys down snug. You don't want to try to over torque these things because these screws often go into plastic, and if you over torque them, bad things might happen. I don't want bad things to happen. 
So as you can now see, we have a beautiful, perfectly functioning screen. All right, so the next step of the process is there's a little protective film cover on this thing. So it's got this little tab down here. So you can go ahead and pull that guy up. There we go. What you probably should do is use your little plastic pry tool, this guy right here, just to get under this edge. Because you don't want to accidentally scratch the screen itself doing this. But yeah, there we go. Like unwrapping a Christmas present. Beautiful. Okay, so this is the start this now. All right, so now you're almost ready to button up. But what you need to do, and I see there's some double-sided sticky tape residue that's all over this thing. So the these things are really held in place by the tape. So if you don't have some electronic grade double-sided tape, you should get some before this. I happen to have some up here. All right, I just happen to have some of this left over for some previous jobs. This is 3M Electronics Great double-sided tape. So just find the end of this stuff. And all I'm gonna do is put down four threads right on top of the old tape. Now this old tape still has a little bit of tack to it, so I probably could just put it on and forget about it. But I like to be thorough because like I said, these things really are held on primarily by the tape. So if the tape that's holding it in place isn't good, then it could accidentally snag and then peel itself off. Bad things happen. I don't want to be responsible for bad things happening. So I'm going to go the extra mile. Okay. I'm going to make sure I have a nice solid end to start the stick. Well, I'll use my little scissors. that little piece off and now let me scoot this back so you can see what I'm doing so I've got the little bezel here so I'm just going to lay down four little pieces right by the edge right on top of the path of the old double-sided tape it's not the exact same width as the old tape looks close enough Forget this is double-sided tape so it has the little white plastic cover on it that you have to take up in order for the other side to stick if you don't do that then you're going to end up with some non-sticky tape that's not good all right so here here i'm filling this up that's one piece off i'll go ahead and do this other one here number two I'm using my fingernails. If you don't have fingernails, this is another great example of a good opportunity to use your little um, pry tool. Like I said, you can get these pry tools or these pry, these little, basically they're cell phone repair kits or electronics repair kits. You can get them on eBay or Amazon for just a couple bucks a set. It's pretty straightforward. So, all right. Here's the fourth piece, comes right up. Now, be careful. When you put this top piece on, there's two microphones and a, two, there's two microphones, the camera and this little light sensor thing here. If you're not careful, you can put your tape right over that and then you're not gonna have a functioning microphone. Uh, life isn't good. All right, so I got that all together. So now I can just get this in place. And now I can just go around and just stick all these down. So I'm just going around the side and I'm clicking everything back in place. 
So all those little click connectors that hold this thing together that I had to pry off when I first put it in, I'm basically clicking it back in position. So you might be a good idea to use a hand behind the screen so you know you're pushing against something solid. There you go. Because you need to make sure that everything is laying down flat or else things are going to bulge and they're going to hit your keyboard area of the screen. I mean, oh, the keyboard area of the computer. That's not good. Like I said, be careful here. Don't force anything. It should go right into place. You just need to put the pressure in the right area and it should be fine. So now that everything is snapped on, I'm going to go around the edge one more time with my hand behind it as well and just make sure that the double-sided tape is nice and secured. And voila, you have a fully repaired laptop screen. So again, here we go. And what a lovely screen this is too. All right, guys. And just you know, just check to make sure everything's functional, which it appears to be. Ta-da! I have a nice fully repaired 1080p full resolution laptop screen. All right, guys. I hope this was useful for you. Um, this is a little this is a little unusual for my channel, but you're going to be seeing me do a little bit more, just kind of more random videos out there. So call this an our house life hack. Well. Okay, okay, guys, our house 21 signing out. Remember the mantra, fly, fix, fly, break it, fix it, and do it all over again. In this case, I'm showing you, once you've broken it, how you can fix it, and hopefully they don't do this again. Okay, guys, our house 21 signing out. Peace.